Okay, so I'm going to show you and kind of run through the basics of optimizing a background image for the web. First of all, I'm going to grab an image, a high resolution image from this website, unsplash.com. Now, you guys can use this website to find images, high resolution images that can be used for background imagery, that can speak your aesthetic, etc. So I'm just going to find something uh, generic that I could potentially use as a background image. We'll go ahead and use this one. And I'm going to hit download up here, and it will go to my downloads. Now the thing is that you have to remember is that when you're downloading these images, they're going to be very large. And like we spoke about, um, dimensions and file size are important when we're dealing with web. So let's just take a look at this, what dimension this is image that we just downloaded is. So we have something to compare. So the image I just downloaded, when I look at the information available for it, is 4,608 pixels wide by 2,592 pixels tall. Now if you remember when we spoke uh, last in class, a full screen viewport is oftentimes 1920 by 1080. Um, this one is, my screen is a little bit bigger than that, but basically it's almost four t or half the size of what this image is. So this image is too big for um, utilizing on the web, so we need to shrink it down so that we don't bog down our website. So what we're gonna do to do that is we're gonna take our image and open up place it in Photoshop to optimize it. So I'm going to open up Photoshop and in Photoshop I'm going to open a new document and this document I'm going to make it my screen size. So that's 1920 by 1080 and I'm going to set my pixels at 72 because that's what I need uh, for uh, web size. When I hit create I have my white area here and what I'm going to do is just simply find my image and drag it into my file. My image gets placed. This one places fairly nicely, but say I wanted to adjust my image a little bit. I'm going to do that. Maybe I want to adjust the crop. So I crop out the Apple logo, maybe, because it's not sponsored by Apple. Um, and say this is the image I want to use. Also, potentially, I might want to add some sort of tint to my image. So I'm going to add a layer on top fill with black and adjust the opacity and now I've tinted my image just a little bit so I could add some text on top. Now that I have my image like this I'm going to go to file export save for web legacy this is the important part you have to make sure that when you go to file export save for web legacy that you select JPEG high from the drop down menu Leave all the settings the same right here. And now we can see it gives you a little preview of how big your file will be. And our dimensions will be 1920 by 1080, which is the document size. Go ahead and hit save. And you're going to put this in a folder appropriately named for the, for the class and your website. So in this case, I'm going to make a folder BDSN 4950. And inside of that folder, I'm going to name a folder background images. I'm also going to name my image background image one. You want to make sure you name your images appropriately so you can find them. And then hit save. Now this photo was a landscape photo. So I'm going to show you how to do the same thing say you have a high resolution portrait photo that you wanted to use as a background image for your website. So let me find a photo that's a portrait photo. Say this one here. I'm going to go ahead and download this one. Now this same process can be done and should be done for any images that you want to use as background images. Um, for example, the template in the video I let you guys watch, Pacific, the background image, so you know what I'm talking about is the image of that burger or that sandwich that's there. So these are images that go into the background that identify you and your aesthetic. Uh, so what we're going to do 
is take this portrait image, drop that in. As you can see, it doesn't fill the whole region. Um, also, let's take a look at that size. As you can see, this image is 2,500 pixels by 380, 3837, so the high resolution. It's a really big file. If we put all of our images in our website like this, our website will load slowly. So I'm going to get my bounding box, and we are going to change the size of this image to fill the area. Sick. What's happening? Oh, there we go. So as you can see, it's the same thing with a portrait image. Because it's high resolution, I'm able to zoom in and use any region of the image that I want for my crop that will fill my screen. Place my image. I'm still going to add the tint. Go to File, Export, Save for Web Legacy, and all my previous settings should be saved. So then I'm going to hit Save, and this image is going to be named Background Image 2. So now what do you do with these images? So let me go to Squarespace real quick and show you an example of what you do with these images. So if I go to Squarespace, let me log in to my Squarespace. expired one sec. I'm going to create a new site. I'm going to actually use the template that I'm talking about. Specific. And I'm going to replace the burger and fries image with one of the background images that I just created. Now again, these background images can be your original photography, they can be found photography, um, but they must be edited down and optimized for the web. So we're going to go here. I'm going to edit this banner image that's here. Sometimes it can be a little Remove image, add image. I'm going to find the images that I just saved. And I'm going to place the image. And hit save. My site reloads, and there you go. I have my background image. Now, let's try changing the image on a different section. I'm going to change it on this section down here. Even though there is demo content here, I'm going to remove this image, place another image that's been optimized. And there you go. So that's what we're speaking about when we reference background images, changing the background image. So that's what you guys are going to be working on. Uh, in class, I want you to find 20 images that could be potential background images that represent your aesthetic, that represent your um, style, that represent your work, that you can then optimize. I want you to optimize all 20 images to 1920 by 1080 file dimension. Okay, cool. That's it for working with background images and optimizing.